Hi, everyone. I'm here with Nate Ewart. Welcome to Awake today. And Nate is the owner of Somatic Synergies. Um, he's our latest partner for the big Awake Festival that happens in September. And why I was so excited to introduce you to Nate today is because he has so much going on that can help you to get in your body. And that's so much of what Awake is all about. Um, you may have heard me talk about the monkey mind. It's a classic uh, analogy in Buddhism of how uh, our minds are always chasing through all our senses and, and our thoughts, all this different stuff. And it's so challenging to be centered and here in presence. And what I, what I love about Nate's company, Somatic Synergies, is, uh, is, is mainly his specialties include uh, he's a breathwork facilitator, he's a body worker, he's a mindfulness coach, a Reiki master. Um, and uh, it's all about uh, awakening with Nate as it is with Awake. Um, and also, um, I just read in his bio this morning, too, that he can um, sometimes even connect with higher energies and bring those into service to share with you um, any, any guidance that you need to get more um, into your body, out of that monkey mind and, and present and just living a really good life. So, um, Nate, I'm so glad you're here this morning. Thanks for joining well, thanks. It's always great to like hear all those accolades from someone else. Uh, so thank you for that uh, amazing introduction. Uh, you know, we forget, we get so kind of bogged down in the monkey mind at times, you know, we, it's nice every once in a while to realize how, how far we've come or the experience totally. that we have uh, built, you know? Yeah. If you're um, like most of us, it seems like we, when we set a goal and we achieve it, uh, then we just set the baseline a little higher. And we rarely will take a moment to be like, wow, like, um, you know, I've, I've accomplished some goals in my life. And uh, yeah. it, it helps us to feel, I think, uh, just really like realizing how much we love what we do and, and how many tools that we've gathered uh, yeah. to be able to serve. Because uh, I know at Somatic Synergies, that's what it's all about, as it is at Absolutely. Awake, is every day it's like, how can we uh, how can we do our own practice and, and help others to do theirs? Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, those are a big part of our values is that right we have to be doing the work in order to you know guide others to do the work too so always kind of always in it <clears throat> yeah so i'm psyched nate so um nate's going to be doing a lot with awake i have a feeling because he is part of the festival uh in september uh but we have many months before september so we're going to start playing together uh coming up really soon here this saturday night um in february 18th actually two saturday nights from yeah. now uh, February 18th, and it's a, a little delayed uh, Valentine's Day sub, uh, celebration for couples. And the theme of the night, it's, um, well, I should say it's 7 p.m. at Ahimsa Yoga in Denver mm -hmm. on Saturday, February 18th. And what we want to do at Awake Pop-Ups is to give you something conscious to do on the weekend. Um, you know, a lot of the options out there and, and, and the matrix are, um, you know, you're partying, you might be hung over the next day. And I'm noticing a lot of people in the conscious realm want something healthy and productive, but still really fun to do. Yeah. So, uh, we're starting these things called the wake pop-ups and, um, and the one that I'm talking about today with Nate is ignite connection and it's a special couples only night. And we're bringing in Chris Muse, who's an intimacy expert that if you're watching this in the Denver, uh, greater Colorado area, you may have heard of Chris. She's she's an amazing um, intimacy coach. And uh, so what, what what how Nate is involved in the night, though, is so say you're coming in from a full day and you're up here more than in your body or say you got to the event and you, you tried to find a parking spot out front and you're just kind of not present yet um, at the beginning, be beginning of every away pop up, we have. Uh, an expert come in um, and I hope Nate will do more than one because he's so good at this <laughs> but Nate's going to help us to um, maybe spend 10 or 15 minutes just getting in our body um, and that actually ties in nice with what Chris Muse taught me is um, and what I see I'm, I'm a therapist uh, when I'm not hosting these fun events um, the main thing I see with couples is if you're not in your body and you're stuck in your head that intimacy is going to be very challenging both just talking to each other and connecting. And then if we get into more physical intimacy, um, it just isn't going to happen if we're, if our nervous systems are all messed up and um, we're really stressed out or anxious or in fight, flight, or freeze. Uh, so I just think, Nate, what do you think of all this? Do you think you're the right guy for the job? I feel like it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, if anything, I'm just <laughs> excited to be there. My wife's going to come and, you know, I'm looking forward to some, some connection with her um, through Chris's lead. Um, you, yeah. you know, I've been I've been married for 10 years and 
we've had, we've done a lot of work together. I mean, we've both been in the consciousness realm and the spiritual healing realm and all that for a long time. We've done some Tantra work together and it's, it, it was just perfect timing. We, we've kind of hit these new thresholds and, and plateaus in our relationship and we're really ready to connect on some deeper levels. And so I'm, I'm just really excited to, to be going to this event, first of all. But um, yeah, you know, the embodiment piece, what I'm what I'm really hoping to bring to this is exactly what you said. It's it's getting in your body so that intimacy can be easy, easier, easier. Um, we can't it's like we can't be in our bodies and and not be in the present moment. And intimacy happens right here, right now. And, and so, you know, whether it's, you know, using the breath, I, I have kind of a little plan for what I want to bring in, in that in that little bit of time in the beginning of the of the awake pop up that night, but um, a little bit of breath, a little bit of movement, um, a little bit of realizing that our bodies are the waypoint between humanity and divinity. And when we can find that, that space within ourselves to, to be present, to be aware, right? Like the, the breath is, I heard this the other day and it's, it's been ruminating in my mind for since Saturday, since I heard it, but it's like the breath is the dynamism of awareness. Mm. And I, I actually call my breath work dynamic breath work. And so to hear somebody else say that, I love the idea of, of movement, of dynamism, of integration. And, and through the breath, through movement, we, we get to do that. We get to be really present. Um, we can we can forget about tomorrow. We can forget about yesterday and just be with our breath. And, and in this situation with this um, with this connection class, it's it's be with our partners, be an intimate space with our partners in the moment, present within our bodies, with our breath, with their breath in connection. And, uh, you know, in my experience, specifically with my wife, it's like if we are not in our bodies, even if like even if just one of us isn't yeah. present and aware the intimacy goes out the window, right? You can't have that. You can't have a physical connection with somebody if you're not present in your body. So now that you, you said it that way, it wouldn't even make <laughs> sense because if you're off in the past or uh, future in your mind, you're literally right. not there to have intimacy. Exactly. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> exactly. And I love it. One of my teachers, he always says, he's like, you can't breathe five minutes from now. You can't breathe yesterday. You can only breathe right now. So if you are, you know, conscious aware, breathing, focusing on the movement of your breath, focusing on movement in your body. You can't be anywhere else, but right here, right now. <clears throat> Wonderful. So there's uh, three things I hope to cover on this call. And I think we're already getting to them. Uh, just awesome. one is, as I want to define for everyone that's checking this out, um, what, it, what somatic means, since that's yeah. the name of, of your whole company and embodiment, like what's it mean to be embodied and, and what is uh, somatic uh, all about? And yep. then the importance of getting in our body, which you're already touching on. And then uh, hopefully we can uh, share a little practice today on this call. Um, yep. and they can get a little sneak peek of what they could experience on the 18th with, uh, with me, you, Chris Muse, and all our, all our beautiful couples in the room. Yeah, sounds great. Um, so first of all, somatic um, is, so I, before I, I kind of got more into spirituality and mindfulness and all that, I was, I was very much in like academia. I taught um, anatomy and physiology for many years. I was director of education for a college here in Denver um, many years ago. And um, so like medical terminology was always really fascinating to me. And so the word somatic really on a really basic level just means pertaining to the body. And so somatic synergies for me was all about like, what are all of the things that come together to help with the body, right? And and now, you know, somatic therapy, somatic um, practices, somatic um, practitioners are, are like, somatic is almost kind of a buzzword now, almost like breath work is kind of becoming a buzzword um, of, of all of these things to to get embodied, right? We, we understand, I mean, there's, there's some really amazing, um, scientists and therapists out there that are doing really great work for somatic experiencing, talking about releasing trauma. Um, in, in traditional talk therapy, we um, thank you Bessel van der Kolk for talking about it this way, but he talks about it as the top-down approach, right? So we're gonna affect the mind to try to, to create um, more peace in the body. With somatic therapies and practices, we try to affect the body and the nervous system to then have a calming effect on the mind. So it's a bottom up approach. Mm -hmm. They're both valid. They're, they're both necessary when we're, when we're healing things. Um, 
and so my you know my my big focus is like let's people get people in their bodies i have so many clients that come in and they're like i've been doing therapy for 15 years i understand it i know all my stuff i can explain in, in full detail my traumas my my patterns all these things yeah. And, and there's times when I still don't have choice with it. And so for me, getting embodied, finding that space within self starts to give you choice with your patterns, with your traumas, with, you know, the, the things that, that we want to do differently in our life. <clears throat> so that's kind of, so that's, I think that kind of answers somatic and embodiment a, a little bit. Um, embodiment is that it's being in the present moment, like being in your body, trusting that what you're feeling in your body is real and it's okay. And it's safe. Mm -hmm. I think it's a big thing. I, I work with a lot of people too, that they're trying to find new choice in, in this idea of embodiment, but they don't trust, right? Because they've had so much evidence in their life of, you know, places where they haven't been present, where they haven't been embodied and they've made choices or gotten themselves into situations that weren't safe that didn't put them in the best situation, right? But but when we embody, right? When we get present, when we feel what's going on instead of resisting it, like the choices we make can only push us forward for our, our highest good. Even even so, if it doesn't always feel safe. <laughs> right. So Nate, can you tell us, how do you know when you're, I think most of us intuitively know this, but how does someone know when they're not in their body and they are, you know, like just not here? Well, you mentioned the monkey mind, um, right, right at the start of this call, right? If what I find is if, if your mind is trying to convince you of something, if the mind is racing, if it's, if it's ruminating is a big word I like to use where it's, you know, stuck on the same thought pattern over and over again. Um, those are, those are surefire signs that you are not embodied, right? That you are kind of caught up, you know, up in your head somehow, um, and, and, you know, even, uh, you know, doing a breath practice or doing some yoga or doing an embodiment practice isn't always going to stop that either. Right. But it, it, it can allow us to be present with it. Right. Oh, be, become aware of like, oh, my mind is doing this thing. Maybe I can't stop it right now, but I can be aware that it's happening. So can we repeat that? Uh, that seemed very important. <clears throat> it's because, right, sometimes for, for me, uh, at least, and I'm sure everyone watching, when you're not embodied and you're stuck in your mind, right. um, it can feel very uncomfortable in the body. And of course, we right. want to stop it. But I think what I heard you say is, is much more skillful than that is anything we're against is going to get worse in my experience. Right. Yeah, um, absolutely. So you were saying more maybe just to be present with maybe those uncomfortable feelings of not being present or how would you say? Yeah, it? yeah absolutely. So we it's like embodiment practice, consciousness practices, awareness practices are never about getting rid of whatever experience is happening, right? So if the mind is going crazy, we don't, I mean, of course we want to stop the mind. Nobody, nobody likes to have the mind going in circles and ruminating and getting anxious or depressed or right. Like nobody likes that. Um, but we spend so much time in resistance to those experiences. And most of our suffering lives in our resistance. I actually, I will dare say all of our suffering lives in our resistance, <laughs> right? And if yeah. you can spend, you know, three conscious breaths with the mind flowing, with sadness coming up, with anger coming up, um, just a, a very brief time, like 30 seconds of really feeling something that's uncomfortable can, can heal, you know, years of resistance to it. Wow. <clears throat> I'm just putting this in the and uh, as a, a post here that will come up after her and watching because yeah. so uh, the words I put it to is mindfulness is not about stopping the mind or the negative feelings. Right. This is just resistance. Um, actually, spend some time uh, in in choose to just feel with maybe three breaths mm -hmm. exactly what's going on. Right. Watch it. Become the observer. Right. I mean, you you hear. I mean, I've, I've been studying mindfulness for years and years and years and meditation. And it's like, there's this idea of becoming the observer. And it's like, well, what does that look like? It's okay. My mind is racing. I'm aware that it's racing. I'm going to just watch it race. Like, wow, look at what it's doing. That's interesting. Right. Because our mind is not us. <clears throat> like I am not my mind. I am not my thoughts. It is an experience that happens within me. Right. But I think so often we identify right like we identify that like oh this thing that's happening is me and i don't have choice or control in it and while and again we may not be able to stop it but we can back up a little bit to observe it and just watch the process unfold awesome so yeah. see to the witness back up 
I always think of John Lennon, right? That song, yeah. um, watching the wheels go round and round. He's uh, yeah. no, no, no longer riding the merry-go-round. Um, you just yeah. have to let it go, right? Yep. Yeah. And even after all these years, I've been practicing this 26 years now, I think uh, I still don't want to feel my feelings sometimes. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, they're, they're hard. You know, all of the all of the good things in life get hard at times. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Can you teach us a little more about, um, you know, how, how you help people to get in their bodies and um, in, in present and, and how what they might experience uh, next Saturday on the 18th at the uh, pop up with Chris Muse? Yeah, so I, I use quite a different um, techniques in in my my sessions and in my group workshops and things. Um, as you mentioned, I'm a breathwork facilitator, so that is often one of the biggest techniques I use um, to to get people in their bodies. Because it's like if you're focusing on your breath, you can't not be present with with what's mm-hmm. happening in your body. Um, that being said, there's also I mean I'm a body worker, so I find especially people that are dealing with like anxiety or really strong emotions, they're not wanting to feel they completely like cut themselves off at the throat and and like they don't let themselves get down in their body and so one of the things i find is like just pressure like just compression on people's bodies at times can really just kind of bring them into the moment i think that's a big part of the reason why um like weighted blankets are so are so popular um they're they're great uh you know if you're ever feeling kind of off or like really out there somewhere like put a weighted blanket on you, just like it grounds and, and centers you. Um, so, so pressure, um, sometimes there's some like conscious facilitation, right? Like asking a lot of questions, um, shifting perspective on, on things and not necessarily like, like turning things around or trying to put a happy spin on things, but really like, you know, every viewpoint is valid in the wider we can we can create our viewpoint in any given situation. The more perspective we can gain, right? So so sometimes it, it, it is about shifting perspective, and that is through conversation, usually coupled with some body work, some breath, um, things like that. the The other big thing that I, I realize, and I talk to all my employees about this, the number one thing that we all do here is just hold space. Right. If, if you're not if you're a practitioner of any of these types of things and, and there's something within you that is triggered or or something by something that a, that, a, that a client is dealing with, it gets really challenging to hold that space. Right. But but being able to just hold space for somebody's process, for their experience, for their awakening, for their emotional release, for whatever is there and just be willing to be there and say, hey, it's OK what you are feeling is okay it is part of our human experience it's huge um, acceptance it sounds like yeah like how telling someone it's okay like almost validation if you're helping another like your yeah, partner definitely val- yeah validation very important um and and that's a big thing with um well, well with anything with any when it, with any person to really connect and build trust that idea of empathy and validation and you know all those things are really important and we don't get a lot of that out out there in the world I mean, I often wonder sometimes if some of my clients come in just for that. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe they aren't aware of that consciously, but um, that that space that's held, I think, is really important. Mm-hmm. And that I comes from an, presence, embodiment, right? <clears throat> I just had an own. idea. At, at the, I wonder if if we have enough time at the pop up, we might have to have you in for a whole one on your own. But uh, since it's couples' night, I wonder could there be or is there time for one? of putting some pressure on your partner or or like you said, helping them to get in their body or do we not have enough time this one? Um, We might. I mean, that's honestly, that's something I hadn't considered, Um, but very possibly I know. Because I know I love my weighted blanket. (laughs) Yeah. And if your partner could be that for you, wow, that's probably why it feels so wonderful to hug, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, touch is is important and it's, it's not just the touch, the energy. It's like that pressure is important too. Like the physical pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's why it, like, you know, animals, dogs that are very anxious and things, they have like, sh- you know, thunder shirts and things like that that are really tight on them that, that help just it calms the nervous system. Right. And um, it, Wasn't there a famous really... thing about Temple Grandin? Um, I think I saw a documentary. Um, she, she made a device that would um, hug the cows or something to calm oh, their nervous system. I haven't seen that. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and she had a lot of sensory stuff. So uh, she'd actually get in it herself. And, and she, she learned that it could really calm her nervous system down to have this, this uh, hugging feeling. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it, well, and that's on, on a very physiological level. That's what we're talking about in all of this is how can we bring the nervous system down to a baseline level? Because every every threshold that it gets kicked up, you know, more toward um, uh, like a sympathetic response or fight or flight response, more and more of the monkey mind things start to happen more and more of our embodiment gets taken away um, because there's a there's a higher level of threat detection there's a higher level of feeling not safe and and it just it zaps us out of our body so all of these practices everything we're talking about i think on a physiological level boils down to like how do we get the nervous system back down right because okay, if so we're this... there executive function comes back <laughs> Well, this this brings me back to this uh, next Saturday night with uh with with Chris Muse on the 18th yeah. for our couples night is so say something as simple as um, you're trying to find a parking spot on the way in and you can't find one and you're running a minute late and I could see that getting a, a feeling of like not safe I'm not on time I'm doing something wrong right. right so you could potentially come into this potentially beautiful night with your partner to talk about intimacy and to connect and be with all these beautiful spiritual type people and feel really off yeah um, so i wonder I, I know we're going to get to experience some practice in this this shorter call yeah. um but before we do would you give us a little um you know example of, of of what you might share with us in this call like what's the best way when you're feeling really uh off to get okay um <laughs> well i mean I'll, i'm sure I'll there's a million ways feel like, yeah there, there's a <laughs> lot um i feel like a broken record oftentimes with this but it's like come back to your breath Yep. You know, like if you're if, if the mind is going crazy, if you're feeling anxious, like like we're always one breath away from a calmer nervous system. But it has to be done from presence, like consciousness, um, uh, trying to breathe into the belly. Right. A belly breath is much more grounding and calming, whereas a lot of times we're breathing up here in the chest. Mm -hmm. And that's that's like a recovery breath. Like if you're running or exercising, it's like, oh, we breathe a little heavier up here. Um, but sometimes when we're flustered or, or in, a, in a heightened nervous system state, we start breathing up here also. And that actually starts to feed the anxiety cycle a little bit. Mm. And so it kind of makes it worse. So if you can get your breath down and of course, it takes awareness. You have to be aware of the fact you're in that. And that's, um, that's what a lot of these other practices do is they start to, to help us realize that we actually do have those moments of choice when we get into heightened states. Okay. Well, uh, so I would love to jump into a little practice really? right now to, to so people can experience it and, and plan to come next Saturday on the 18th yeah. of February. Yeah. So one one breath practice I've been doing a lot lately, and I, I a lot of times we'll use this in the beginning of a um, of a breathwork class or, or group. I do this with my clients. I do this with myself to ground myself before every session. Um, I mentioned, I, I'm pretty sure I said this in the very beginning of the call, of how our bodies, our our, ourselves in the reality of this um, uh, universe, uh, mm -hmm. earth, whatever, we are the, the waypoint between divinity and humanity. And one of the ways I, I help people realize that and feel that is through the breath. And so for those of you that are listening, um, take a moment and just sit up nice and straight, or if you would like to lay down, we're just going to do a few breaths here. Um, but first, um, I want you to Take just a nice big belly breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And if you need to place your hands on your belly so you can feel the rise of the belly and the fall. And I want to bring your awareness to your root, your root chakra. So this is the area around the tailbone, the tip of the tailbone. And so as we're letting this belly breath kind of move in through the nose and out through the mouth, allow your hips to totally relax. Allow your pelvic floor to totally relax. And as you're starting to breathe in, imagine that that breath is actually coming in through that root. So our root is our connection to the earth, to support, to safety, to nurturing and sustenance. And so again, feeling that breath coming in through the root, filling the belly, and just opening some space. And take a couple breaths with that, just pulling that breath in through the root and trying to keep the hips relaxed, the pelvic floor relaxed. And now I'd like you to bring your awareness, your attention to the top of your head, the crown, 
And we're going to see that kind of open and relax too. So maybe relax your forehead, relax your eyes, relax your ears. And we're going to see this breath start to move. So as you pull the breath in through the nose, feel it coming in through that uh, root chakra. We're pulling in that support, that sustenance, that nurturing from the earth. And as we exhale, imagine that breath is flowing out through your crown chakra. And just take a couple breaths with this flow, this idea that you are this open vessel for breath, for energy, for space. Just allowing that breath to flow in through the root and out through the crown. Let's do one more. And being this waypoint of divinity and humanity, we are the space for both directions. So not only can we bring in the support of the earth, but we can also bring in our divinity. So now let's turn that breath around. So now as you're breathing in through the nose, imagine that breath is coming in through the crown. And as you exhale, let it flow out through the root. So we're changing the direction, still being this open vessel for flow, for breath, for life force energy. We're pulling our divinity, our higher self into our humanity in through the crown and out through the root. Just take another breath or two with that direction. Sometimes the breath likes to get a little stuck in areas. That's okay, just allow it to see that movement. We're clearing space. In shamanic practices, we would call this being the hollow bone. <clears throat> Whenever you feel ready, you can just allow the breath to kind of move, to shift to wherever it would like to shift. Just let the body have it. We don't need to worry about controlling it. It will move on its own. Just allow yourself to come back to whatever space you're in. If you had closed your eyes, you can open them now. And just come back here, present. Still feeling that flow through you. And what's great is, uh, I mentioned, I, I do this practice often. Um, I come back to this breath in through the root, out through the crown, in through the crown, out through the root, um, all the time, every day, in sessions, when I wake up in the morning. Um, it's it's that remembrance that, oh, I, I, I do have a body. And I also have this space within me. And I can flow whatever I need to through that space. And that just really helps settle me in, helps me feel grounded, rooted, connected to self, connected to the earth, connected to my body. Um, so thanks. Put in the comments how that felt for you if, uh, if you tried that with us. <laughs> Eric, did you try that? How was that? <clears throat> of course I did. Oh, it was wonderful. I, uh, I feel so much more in my body. Good. Yeah, yeah, I do. I feel, I feel a lot better. You know, a lot of us, I, I don't think I'm alone that when you, this is, a, it, this has been filmed uh, in the morning and sometimes with all the dreams or restless night's sleep, yeah. you can wake up feeling a little like, yeah. And uh, just, just a few minutes with you, Nate, really helped me to, uh, to get here. So beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. That's the hope, yeah. right? Yeah. Be here I'm now. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious, Nate. Um, um, I, I know you have a uh, Tuesday nights at seven Yeah. Um, that, that you have a breathwork uh, class. Can you tell people about that in case they want to start to come and practice with you? Or? Yeah. Um, so where my, my office is um, right off six in Wadsworth in Lakewood. We do an in-person class every Tuesday night at seven. Um, there's usually a theme to each night, just a, a quick, a quick little conversation intention setting. Um, this week we are, talking about the full moon. There's the big full moon this week. And full moons are, are always a good time to reflect, um, maybe set some new intentions. So we're just, we, we have a brief conversation about some sort of theme every week. Um, and then we get into the breath practice. And um, so I, I start with what we just did. And that takes, you know, a couple minutes. And the breath work that I, that I teach in classes, it is a, it, it's based on uh, the rebirthing practices and shamanic breathwork practices. Um, 
and it's a you know circular conscious connected breath it's all about hyper oxygenating the system pulling life force prana energy in and so you get this really beautiful charge and and sensations and emotions move and thoughts move and memories can come back and it's it can be a, an extremely profound and transformational experience um it's uh, it, it has changed my life since i since i started these practices um i mean i I could tell you all sorts of crazy stories about what it's done for me, what I've witnessed in in people. But um, gosh, back to choice, man. Every everything for me comes back to choice. I learned how to hold so much space for myself doing this breath work. And again, that space gives us choice with our triggers, with our patterns, with our traumas. Um, you know, any any time I, I feel like I'm I'm in a situation, I'm like, oh, what choice do I have? Or and I'm like, oh, wait a second, no, I actually do have choice. I'm going to come back to my breath. I'm going to give myself some space. And this, this particular practice of, of breath work has really taught me that and really hammered that in. And that's a big part of why I, why I use it so much with clients. <clears throat> so it's about a two-hour uh, workshop. It's, you know, about 75-ish minutes of the actual breath practice. Um, and with a little bit of time in the beginning and a little bit of time on the end to chat, to process, facilitate. Yeah. Wow. That must be fantastic. <laughs> if I feel this way after three minutes uh, with you, I can't wait to catch a, a okay. So on Tuesday night, seven o'clock, if yeah. you're here in Colorado, it doesn't happen to go out on um, the, the internet, does it? Um, I, I, it will soon. Oh, cool. It's coming soon. Just in <laughs> um, case I, someone sees this, that isn't in exactly. Colorado, this is a great offering. Yeah. I've, I've had um, back during the kind of the COVID shutdowns and things, we, we did do some online. And then once everything opened back up, um, I found everybody wanted in person so badly, and the online classes just weren't weren't really getting booked. So we we shifted to to in person. However, we'll be shifting back to to starting to offer some of those online classes probably in the next month or so. Yeah. Awesome. Well, so if you watch the video to this point, this must be resonating for you. I bet you're getting yeah. something out of it. So I'd love to see you next uh, two Saturdays from now. So on the 18th of February. Uh, we're going to be uh, live in person with Nate and then Chris Muse for a night um, of um, intimate connection with your partner. So it's a partner's night. It's called Ignite Connection. And it's at a beautiful little yoga studio in Denver. It's very intimate space as well. There's only going to be room for 20 couples max. So it's a very intimate, beautiful uh, space called uh, Ahimsa Yoga. Uh, so we'll see you there next uh, in two Saturday nights, February 18th for Couples Night at Awake Pop-Up. And uh, we're going to get to do, if you didn't catch it already in the video, we're going to get to do a little movement, some breath work. And Nate's going to help us to drop into this beautiful night of uh, connection with our partners. So uh, I can't wait to uh, see you in person, Nate, and meet your yeah. wife. And I'm, I'm going to bring my partner. And um, uh, anything else to add before we wrap up? Um, no, just, you know, thanks for, thanks for chatting and, and putting these things on, man. This work is so, so needed right now. And it's, it's great to have, have people that are really just supporting and pushing these things. It's, it's really great. So thank you. <laughs> oh, and something else to mention would be that we are doing an early bird special at Awake. We really do like to keep things super accessible. So right now it's, it's $20 off for couples to sign up. Right. Um, so if you're seeing this video, like, uh, you know, before a little bit before the 18th, you can get a good deal. So um, awakeexperience.com is the website and click on pop-ups. So we'll see you uh, soon, Nate. All right. Thanks, Eric. Thank you.